everybody. We got a big episode for you today. There are uh, counterfeit airplane parts and jet engines found around the world. It's a huge story. It's been developing slowly over the last few weeks. Is it safe to fly? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned to find out because we'll tell you. Plus, the CEO of AMC, the silverback gorilla himself, sexted the wrong lady and he's getting blackmailed. We're going to dive into all that. Yeah, and then, of course, we've got uh, Adderall and Betrayal. We've got updates on the Adderall genius Sam Bankman-Fried. All of his little buddies are running, squealing like little piggies. They're going to the, They're going in court. They're saying they're testifying against him, and he just needs his Adderall to, sit, to be able to save the world. He just needs enough money. He needs enough Adderall. Give him his Adderall. Give him his Adderall, we say. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned. We got a real doozy for you. Cue the intro. Yes. Dude, what? look at your lap. Look at the way you hold your laptop. What? Okay, folks, welcome to another riveting episode of, of this sh- program, episode number 18, I think. But nobody <laughs> nobody's counting anymore, Defin- least of We've all lost us. Count. We've lost count. Couple of housekeeping things. Is that yeah, what we, we got well, administrative housekeeping. Administrative um, housekeeping things up top. We just launched a new series that will be airing every Monday, and we've put a lot of work into it. So we would love it if you'd go check those out. There, Dylan on our, put a lot of work into Dylan it. Dylan especially put a lot of work into it. Let him know you love it. For the audio listener, it is exclusive to YouTube because it would be pretty much useless to have <laughs> yeah. as audio. But yeah. if you're an audio listener regularly, go check it out. I think yeah. you might enjoy yourself. We think you we think you might enjoy it. Did we say what it's called? It's called Ben and Emil on colon and then and blank. We're on all different kinds of stuff. Airships, uh dirigibles, um <laughs> <laughs> dirigibles? Dirigibles? Uh yeah, we're we're talking about all sorts of different topics. The first one is movies. And I regret to say that I thought it would be a good idea to get drunk. Ben got drunk and explained the end of Avengers to me. Yeah, I for a long time. For for a a long long time. time. Yeah. If you I, thought Avengers was long, I I did. I mean, it's basically ninety percent me just talking at a meal. So pretty much, pretty much an offshoot of this show. <laughs> uh, love and, when my friend comes over and gets drunk and just talks at me. Yeah, we do love when that happens. And then also uh, the Patreon. We're going to have our first TikTok episode for the uh, my monthly TikTok roundup, which I think is for the $5 tier, right? I think so. And then we're going to do our call-in episode soon, probably next week or something or the week after because it is for the month of October. We're going to do that. And if you're new here, welcome. Oh, also, big thanks to everyone who came to the show. It was so fun. Oh, yeah, Emil's show. Uh, thanks for coming. Sold I wasn't out. there. I was in Dallas. And um, pff, could we come to a city near you? So, Was it good? It was so good. Did you so kill? Did you, it was so fun. Did you kill, uh, as it, comedians like to say? It was just really fun. It was really good. Um, go ahead. I had a guy DM me and ask me... Uh, to, what to do with his ticket that he bought for your show because he couldn't go. And I said, my brother, you got, you got the <laughs> I, wrong don't, guy. I don't know. You got the wrong guy. I don't know what you want you me to do. Guy. I don't know. So I told him, hey, man, I'm not in town, but try the Reddit. Also, why do people buy tickets for stuff? It seems like every time, is it just because we have this perspective now as people who sell tickets to shows where it happens a lot more often than you think? Yes. Where people buy sh- tickets to shit and then they're like, I actually can't go. 100 percent. it happens all the time definitely okay yeah all right you've just never been on the receiving end of it yeah you just show up at shows and go it's weird here and i can't shit what when did i ever do that (laughs) when did i ever show up and say it's weird all the time (laughs) that's why i try to man that's why i try to man well i try to i try to get it out before i I go anywhere feces yeah before especially (laughs) especially especially before a flight Boy, if I have an 8 o'clock flight or something, 8 o'clock in the morning, talk about a panic attack. I better be able to get it out because going at the airport is a non-starter. Unless they have one of those uh, all-gender... Unless they have one of those all-gender bathrooms where where you can close the door behind you and it's completely private. Oh, You're like, I can't shit if the airport's not woke. Well... (laughs) 
That's what cracks me up about all gender bathrooms. It's like every bathroom should be all gendered. What about a, a bathroom in a house? It's a little different. Not mine. Mine's actually men only. That's true. That's true. There's a sign above the toilet. Well, I sorry. do actually get pissed when there's not a urinal, though. In a bathroom? Yeah. 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 We deserve that as men. It's just nice to piss in a urinal. Also, you would think that it is more practical for sitting if you think about it. Just like I'm you never sitting on a urinal. Rear your butt against it and just... <laughs> no. Anyway, speaking of putting your butt up against urinals, we're... let's dive right in. Huh? So we, we got... haven't talked about in a while. Yeah, FTX and SBF. SBF, scam bankman fraud. Scam bankman fraud. Boy, oh boy. He he's getting his butt spanked. <laughs> he's just getting his butt spanked every which way from Sunday. Even by even by his own friends. His own friend, but deservedly so. When you look at what he's he's done, he 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 got them to commit all kinds of crimes. Uh, he well, he sure. directed them. To, I mean, that's we'll get into it. But I will some some of these things you hear the the you know the FTX board and other members of the higher ups. You're like okay. They act like they have no agency or whatever or mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. It's like they're like, I found out that we owed eight billion dollars, but I knew I needed to stay. <laughs> yeah, I was scared, so I asked Sam, and he assured me that it was fine. So I believed it was fine. Right. <laughs> but so uh, the big headlines are that his ex girlfriend Caroline Ellison. Um, the big headlines are that she's finally tested. She's taken the stand and she's testifying against A lot of people are taking this. So it's right. Caroline Ellison, who you is probably the most famous other person mm-hmm. a part of this outside of SBF. She was um, the former CEO of Alameda Research, which was the the trading firm affiliated with FTX. Mm-hmm. Also, sometimes girlfriend slash lover. They were on and off a few times, uh, correct? If you want to think about that hot situation down in the bahamas kind of like us sometimes, sometimes lovers. lovers yeah sometimes not i'll leave it to the people to figure out if we're <clears throat> porking each other right now and then the others you probably have heard of gary wang the co-founder of, F- F- of ftx mm-hmm. nishad singh um a former head of engineering at ftx and then they've both testified as well the last guy ryan salem has not he was a uh, ceo of ftx digital markets is their subsidiary in the, bah- in the bahamas so I, I think it's it would probably be most fun to kick off with just these great visuals of here's Caroline Ellison um, spotted outside the courtroom. And she just looks, I believe, as you put it, she she looks like one of those uh, before and after. I don't know what she I looks said. like the after of those before and after photos when you see a president entering office and then seeing after all the cortisol has been coursing through their veins. Well, yeah, someone pointed out that she looks she looks. They they all aged a decade in a yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. The and look, whew, staring down decades in prison, I would probably also. She looks like not be feeling good. She, she yeah, I I would not feel good either, and especially yeah, especially when you got to rat out your ex lover. Mm-hmm. You're 28 years old. That's what would kill me the most. Ratting out your ex lover. Yeah, I hate ratting. I mean, is it ratting or is it <laughs> pr- protecting? Eh, it's a bunch of things, but. She and I, I'm, I'm not meaning this as an ins, is as an insult. You just have to understand that my brain works this way, where if I see something, I, I'm going to just blurt it out. But she looks like a Disney. Oh, we know. She looks like a, she looks like a a human Disney um, mouse accountant. She looks like a she looks like a Disney character that's like an animated mouse who's also a nerdy accountant with glasses who's been um, anthropomorphized. Uh, there's also these great, um, I don't, I still don't understand. My favorite is when the, someone tweeted it, like the, the, it looks like the courtroom artist lost a lot of money in FTX and <laughs> yeah. see all the victors. We're, we're looking at these courtroom, uh, why do they still do courtroom sketches? I don't why don't know. they just allow fucking cameras? I don't know. That's a I, good question, Ben. I, nobody can be sure. Nobody actually knows the answer to that question. But yeah, so she's 28. She ran uh, the Alameda Research. It was a hedge fund. Famously did so without risk parameters. So I, I'd like to, at this point, play this famous clip of her boasting about not having any risk parameters. So here it is. Absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. Be- She's talking about operating a multi-billion dollar crypto hedge fund 
and she uses very little math, quote unquote. Being comfortable with risk is very important. Um, <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool. I'm trying to think. Stop losses are like the standard risk management tool. It, it is a it is a fail safe you put in place where you tell the computer, hey, if the if the price reaches this point, sell it. Period. Yeah, so we don't lose more. I guess in in crypto, it might be a different. They might view it differently because there can be such wild swings. So they don't. They might not want to get stopped out of a position, and only to have it, you know, rocket back. But still, I think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money. Um, well, I don't know. I probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that. Also, I th I love her giggle. This might make me sound like an idiot, but the uh, every time she says she majored in math, or I read that, I'm like, is that not fucking crazy? Majoring in math? Yeah. Why is that crazy? Because it's so hard. No, because it's uh, it's so broad. It'd be like I majored in science. Hmm, that's a good question. It, it's everywhere. A Stanford uni University graduate who majored in math, and I'm like, surely they just didn't feel like digging in more. But she just said it. My math degree. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point, man. It's like majoring in social studies, huh? And also, <clears throat> what it, it, math is absolute. It, 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 what's your what's your um, what's your thesis going to be on? I'm going. There's proof. some guy screaming at us right now. Oh yeah, oh, for sure. Just on it. There are certain proofs that have yet to be proved. <laughs> They're only theoretical. So, oh, oh. calm down, dude. We yeah, get it. Look, two plus two is fucking, four. If you majored in math, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Actually, I'm not. I'm pissed at you. Well, speaking of <laughs> math, we can all do the math that uh, she she was making a fuck ton of money. She was making 200 grand a year salary. Then she got a bonus of $20 million in 2021. But at trial, she did admit that she committed fraud, conspiracy to commit fraud, and money laundering with Sam uh, scam bankman fraud and others as they stole from customers and investors in FTX and lenders to his hedge fund Alameda. So there's a couple. I'm I'm gonna up top make a couple distinctions here, so so you don't get confused thereafter. God, excuse me. Damn it. This also, it's important to note that so those, Coke. <clears throat> those people we listed up top: uh, Caroline Ellison, the one we're talking about now, Gary Wang, Nishad Singh, and Ryan Salem. They've all pled guilty. Mm -hmm. SBF is the one who SBF is... SBF has said, not guilty. Yes. He didn't do any of this. So, so this whole spate of fraud and conspiracy charges. Right. So FTX was a, a crypto exchange, right? It is where they connect buyers with sellers, basically. FTX had a ton of investors, and it was its, its books were open to those investors. Uh then there was also his hedge fund called Alameda Research. It did not have open books to uh, investors. It had lenders, but it did not. It wasn't the same kind of structure. He was using Alameda Research, the hedge fund, to prop up FTX, and in some cases, vice versa. When FTX, uh, he was they were using customer funds. It'd be like me putting money, you putting money into your checking account. And then Bank of America using that money, uh, which would be against the rules, using that money to like go pay off some other... Or make risky bets. Yeah, sure. So now that we've got that out of the way, uh, she quote, she's quoted as saying, SBF directed me to commit these crimes. She said that he set up systems that enabled Alameda to withdraw unlimited money from FTX accounts and directed them to use it to repay loans. $14 billion total was eventually withdrawn. She repeatedly said that he was behind the biggest financial moves of his companies. And uh, for some reason, Bitcoin that they mined were even called Sam's Coins, which is really fun. We love that. We love that. He, he named them for himself. Uh, but the, the headline of this is what's really great because he apparently SBF envisioned leading huge, huge companies and using... The money that he would make influential, inf Jesus Christ, influentially, okay. especially in politics, and he gave himself a five percent chance that he'd become president someday. 
I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it still happening. Still? Shit. Yeah. Why not? He might run Who for cares? president for he might run for president from jail. He might you know what he might run for president for? The president of the freaking jail. <laughs> <laughs> Do prisoners elect like a prisoner uh, is there yeah. a prisoner body like mm-hmm. there is a student body at a high school always yeah yep the president the the representative yeah and you get to you know you do things like uh you get to take a shower first r- you, you you try to push for better food wait are you being serious there no. is that no because oh, fuck <laughs> there should be that there should be that all right let's get the meanest baddest dude out there to advocate for all the rights of the prisoners yo we need better soap I'm open to it. Yeah. Mm. You know what soap I miss from school is the powdered. Uh, the soap that Trader Joe's got rid of. They discontinued. No, I'm talking about the powdered pink soap. The tea tree oil soap that why'd they Trader stop, Joe's had. Why'd they stop doing that? It beats me. Why do they get rid of any of the products I like at Trader Joe's? Huh. Why'd they get rid of that jalapeno hot sauce? I have no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't notice when Trader Joe's stops I carrying do. something. I just assume that they're out that week. No, I ask. Oh, go, oh no, we oh, don't do that We anymore. stopped doing that. Hmm. Well, at one point, <laughs> <laughs> wait. Do you remember the powdered pink the soap? The Trader Joe's tea tree oil. The soap. powdered pink soap that you would get in in elementary school, and you'd hit the little metal thing, yeah, and yeah, it was course, very. Of course, of oh course. God, I loved that shit. It smelled so good. It it even had um, what's it called? Where you take off a small layer of skin. What's exfoliating. That? Yeah, it had its exfoliating properties. Oh, so good. So at one point. Sam Bankman Fried was worth a whopping $32 billion. A lot of these people were billionaires on paper because they owned um, percentages of right. FTX. Right. So one of the things that's been going on with SBF is he has he's he's been really clamoring about getting his precious Adderall. He needs Adderall. And just like all of us. You know, I will say that. So on Sunday, his lawyers appealed to the judge requesting that he be given his 12-hour extended. 20 milligrams of Adderall before the trial on right, Monday. Right, because right now they're giving him... Uh, so apparently he's currently allowed to receive one dose of Adderall. The drug is prescribed for his ADHD between 4 and 6 a.m. each day. But the lawyer said his dose wears off by the time the trial begins each day at 9.30 a.m. Jesus Christ. Why does it fucking give it to him at 9? Yeah, I don't I Why don't are they understand. waking him up at 4, 4 a.m.? <laughs> to give him Adderall. <laughs> they say he has not been able to concentrate at the level he ordinarily would, and they're arguing that without it, he'll return to his depression and ADHD, which will negatively impact his ability to assist in his own defense. I get that. I get that. It, oh, it, it makes sense. <clears throat> I mean, if when you phrase it that way, is coming about as it being about like uh, D- being your own defense like if it's crucial to that but i don't know would you be able to argue just as i guess you wouldn't i was gonna say could you argue just as well that i need my coffee before i plead guilty look if i'm facing life in prison then my defense lawyer says what do you need what can we get you i'm saying as much adderall as you can fucking find <laughs> i said i'll say we can beat this thing <laughs> just get me the adderall He's like Popeye with spinach. He really thinks that it's like, no, I can figure a way out of this. And the fact that all my boys and my ex-lover is trying to put me away, just get me some Adderall. They're trying to... We can do this. mm. Yeah, she's testifying under a cooperation deal that could get her leniency Right, they're all trying to... sentencing. They're all trying to get better deals. Yeah. Uh, Babu. I mean... So like Gary Wang is another one where... Because... So apparently SBF is not a coder. No, not so at all. So Gary Wang and people like Nishad Singh, who was the uh, who was the head of engineering, Gary Wang was overseeing Singh, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, were writing the actual code of a lot of these uh, things, apparently at the direction of SBF, but making a lot of these things possible. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, one of them was the the code that allowed Alameda Research to have these. Uh, this very loose relationship with FTX. Mm -hmm. There's one line of code in particular that they're really focusing on that was called, quote, allow underscore negative, which allowed Alameda on FTX to have a negative balance. And this was done to avoid liquidation. So the way that that works is, and so here's a tweet from SBF himself. Alameda is a liquidator. uh, uh, Alameda is a liquidity provider on FTX. So he's saying that his own hedge fund is providing liquidity on the exchange FTX. He's saying that, hey, 
we're out there buttressing um, certain trades if necessary. But then he goes on to say their account is just like everyone else's, though. The hedge fund's incentive is just for FTX to do as well as possible. By far, the dominant factor is helping to make the trading experience as good as possible. So that's what he's alleging on, was alleging on Twitter. Um, he was first saying that it, it was uh, it was to be able to pay for expenses for the FTT token, which was issued by FTX, according to Wang. But after being implemented, the ability to go negative was used for other things like trading, unlimited withdrawals of FTX fees, and customer money. Um, so usually if a if an if he, i mean he's saying that alameda was treated as any other account if any other account were to go negative they'd immediately be shut down because ftx would be on the hook right if you overdraw your checking account bank of america is going to shut you down no no and I mean, they're going to charge you some fines i mean they're me. not going to ch- yeah if it, they they actually let you cuz they want to charge you fines but i'm talking about you know but also i'm pretty big over there so they wouldn't do that they wouldn't me. do that what do you think they'd do Say, Mr. Take, DeRosa. They'd say, take more. Take more, please. How much do you need? Yeah. And I'd say, get me that Adderall. <laughs> get me some Adderall, and I'll tell you. Why don't you give me some Adderall, and I'll tell you. So Wang said that he trusted SBF when he said that they could withdraw money so long as it didn't exceed FTX's revenues. And when it did, uh, that's when Wang said he knew it must have been coming from customers. So SBF's basically sitting back, chilling, Wang comes to him like a chicken with his head cut off saying, hey, what's going on? We're, we're withdrawing more than our means. And SBF's going, hey, as long as we're not exceeding how much money FTX is taking in, we'll be fine. Right. We'll rectify it. Yeah. And then they started exceeding that amount. And SBF still just starts throwing him some more bullshit like, oh, yeah, but it's backed by the FTT token when we got all this liquidity elsewhere. And it just started to very quickly get very fucking messy. And so because... As I said earlier, FTX's balance sheets were visible to investors and Alameda's weren't. They used Alameda to assume some of FTX's losses, including several hundred million dollars in losses from this debacle with a coin called MobileCoin in 2021. And so then by 2022, as you said, Ellison Singh and Wang figured that uh, Alameda, Alameda owed... 11 billion dollars and ftx's revenues were only one and a half billion so you remember just a moment ago hey don't exceed ftx's own revenues but they did by fucking 10 billion dollars but wait so this is a perfect i want to talk about the the thing i was saying at the beginning where these people like you know they want to put it all on him but they also had this crazy complex about it right yeah so this is nishad singh asked how he felt about discovering the hole in the balance sheet He says, I was blindsided and horrified. I felt really betrayed, but he felt he couldn't leave. He wouldn't be able to live with himself if his departure meant that FTX fell and the fall was avoidable. Bankman Freed had told Singh he was indispensable. So it's like, they find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, this is fucking horrible. But like, well... I can't I can't get out of this situation or do anything about it. I just have to fucking sit here and... I wonder if he thought that he could fix it. It sounds like that's what it was, right? Because he was like... If there's a way that this could be fixed, you know, I'm one of Sam's top guys. Yeah. And imagine I left him and didn't. Well, and also he did have an incentive because in lieu of cash bonuses, uh, oh, yeah. he got he was getting equity. getting stake in FTX. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, he was only getting 200 grand a year. Only 200 grand a year? I mean, for the amount of like... The, the the you got to get something in, if you're putting if you're doing your just fucking fraud. life <laughs> if you're doing that much fraud you better be getting <laughs> True. i mean ellison she got 20 million dollars yeah so but so then yeah they after the these three figured out how fucked alameda was alameda investors figured it out too they wanted their money back and so uh sbf directed ellison singh and wang to pay them using ftx customer funds he just was like moving around the shells, like, okay, truly just a Ponzi scheme. Like, hey, okay, let's grab let's grab the checking account money and pay off our hedge fund investors who now want their money back. Right. And it's just it's a mess. Okay, so now how are we gonna pay back the 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 FTX customer funds if we're barely making right. enough to stay afloat? Meanwhile, while all this is going on, he's literally like doing media appearances and stuff. And there's mm-hmm. a very famous episode from the the podcast called odd lots where he is a guest with um 
shit, what is that guy's name? Matt, Matt Levine. And I don't think they've played that part yet, but they have played clips from this episode Mm -hmm. where SBF is describing stuff and I'm sure it's coming and uh, it'll be very fun when that is played in the courtroom. But there's a moment where Matt Levine just flatly asks him like, how is this different from a Ponzi scheme? And he just like explains a Ponzi scheme and Matt (laughs) Levine's head is like about, he's like, what? That's yeah, you, you yeah, just, <laughs> and they're like, okay, we can move on. Was that around the time that he also tweeted uh, on November seventh? He it tweeted was right before. It was like in the summer because all this stuff exploded in the fall. Yeah, it was. It was like right in the summer when everyone was still like, "This is our golden boy of crypto." This yeah. is. I, we know there's a lot of bullshit in crypto. We know there's a lot of scams and whatever, but this guy's the real deal. He's We've got him on stage with Tony Blair and Bill Clinton, where he's. Look at that wacky hair. He <laughs> yeah. drives a Honda Civic. I mean, we know people who were like, who seem smart and informed about all this stuff who kind yeah. of bought into the FTX. I thought that I I didn't know anything about him except for I just trusted the other people who. Yeah, I mean, he him. was fully uh, vetted by yeah. the powers that be. Yep. I fully thought that he was some kind of weird genius and his, uh, his net worth reflected that genius. And that, who's the. Kevin No, who's the Moneyball guy? Michael Oh yeah, that guy. He was writing a book about him. He was like this Wait, is... you mean not Moneyball, but the big short guy? Same guy. Oh, oh. Moneyball. Right. What are you googling? Moneyball guy? Yeah. Moneyball yeah, Michael, guy. B- Michael Lewis. Michael uh, Lewis, that's right. <clears throat> oh yeah, he just got fucking murked. Michael Lewis? Yeah. Didn't he get fully tricked? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. he fully fell into the um into the trap of SBF. He got lost in SBF's beautiful brown eyes. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. He was like, I'll go down to Bahamas and be another lover. Mm. Um, one of the things that they showed in the trial was the actual balcony on which Singh approached SBF. And the way that they, they paint it with words is that SBF was just kind of strewn about like a like a like a Greek guy getting fed grapes like in ancient Greece, just on the thing, just saying, "Don't worry about it." And seeing was they're they're just trying to the prosecution was trying to underscore the excess because they're in this beautiful villa in, right. in the Bahamas on this um on this veranda, and FTX or SBF is just saying like, "Don't worry about it. Do this and and then you know we'll be fine." There's a weird point where in the Verge article they make a they make a point to. To say that apparently his mother, Barbara, got took issue with this story. She said to really set the scene, Singh testified, pros- to set the scene as Singh testified, prosecutor Nicholas Ruse pulled up a photo of the balcony in question. Barbara Freed, the defendant's mother, appeared incredulous as the luxury balcony appeared on the screen. As <laughs> Singh told the story of the conversation, Freed appeared agitated, occasionally glancing in the direction of her son. Right. What what I mean? What's her point? I mean, there's all kinds of wacky shit. Apparently, Caroline Ellison has these like weird fans, and they're going to the trial. Oh yeah, to watch. Uh, you know, because they're everyone can't get into the room, so there's overflow rooms where they're putting it on Twitter. Uh, Twitter TV on TV screens. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I love that. I'd be one of those fans. I'm a fan of hers. <laughs> you're an yeah. Ellison head. I love Disney characters. <laughs> True. I love human Disney characters. <laughs> But yeah, this is it's it's she's standing up for himself. She's herself. Himself. She's fighting back. She's <laughs> fuck. <laughs> well, wait. So what I really liked was on November 7th of last year, SBF tweeted, FTX is fine. Assets are fine. FTX has enough to cover all client holdings. And then Wang immediately said during trial, FTX was not fine and <laughs> assets were not fine because FTX didn't have enough assets for customer withdrawals. And then four days later. On November 11th, FTX went bankrupt. Remember, it just like all all of a sudden, just, yeah. whoa, oh, holy shit, this whole thing just fell we apart. We were in Japan. Yep. Watching it all happen. We were. So then uh, SBF directed um, that, uh, wait, he, he directed Wang to transfer money on November 12th to Bahamian regulators who he believed would be more likely to let him stay in control and still try to salvage the whole situation, all while... United States regulators were ordering him to transfer the assets to the U.S. for, for seizure. And, uh, man, even when he was caught, even when the, the ship was sinking, he still insisted to to maintain control over the, um, oh, over I the mean, steering wheel. Oh, I mean, he's incorrigible. They, you know, they put him back 
into custody after being let out on bail because he kept he kept <laughs> contacting witnesses and trying to tamper with witnesses. That's right. I mean, yeah, he's he cannot be stopped. He's yeah. a menace. <laughs> like, I, yeah, just. As it's Gotta all going tip my down, hat to it, truly, as it's all going down, just like holding Twitter spaces, yeah, and just an absolute menace. Yeah, he's been in jail since August because the judge determined he was trying to influence Ellison and other witnesses. And yeah, he, he couldn't be he couldn't be trusted <laughs> to await trial, and I think he's out on. I think he, his bail amount was set to like two hundred and fifty million dollars. Just to ensure, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure his parents had to put up their house as collateral. And yeah, all that shit. Yeah, but he's but he's in jail. Like he's yeah, because they were like he's we cannot stop this. Yeah, guy. he changed his hair. Apparently, that's one of the things I like about the courtroom uh, uh, drawings is that he changed his hair to a more respectable, like slicked back look. To um, yeah, yeah, she's got the look at this courtroom. Awful. God damn. They really did our girl dirty. The sad puppy dog uh, eyes and then him looking like uh, a mafioso. Just look. I love this one. For the audio listener, God, I wish you could see it. <laughs> she looks sad on the... She she looks quite stoic, actually, on the... Um, on the on the stand. And then he's just kind of... He looks like he's got a crow magnon forehead. Honestly, he from what they did to her, he looks great. Yeah, he does. Fucking, they, it looks like they put her in the Toxic Avenger machine or something. Jesus Christ, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I think it's that, a drawing. Yeah. I, it's not what she actually looks like. Yeah. If they they did her dirty. She's uh she's uh, she's got it going on. She's got it going for her for sure. Is I, what we can all agree on. I don't think they will because, I mean, I can't imagine it going well. But I hope for our sake we get um. We get some testimony from SBF. Just uh, let's get this dude just fucking zooted off some Adderall. Just I would actually love to see that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we couldn't <laughs> buzzing see. off amphetamines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, dude, get him, get him the amphetamine salts. I mean, as someone and who then uh, let him just rip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the defense would let him take the stand. I mean, it's it's ultimately up to him. We'll they see. were saying that before he could even enter a plea, he needed his Adderall to figure out. I need my Adderall to be able to think. It clearly begs the enough. question: Have we gone too far with Adderall? Is, yes, is, absolutely. Is SBF our fault? Yes, I mean Adderall. I'm I'm a perfect example of. I was able to go into a doctor and just say, "I can't really think in school, please." And he's like, "Okay, well, here's thirty milligrams of amphetamine salts." And I just got 60 of them yeah, per month. We, we had, 60 of them. We had a guy in New York everyone would go to. Yeah, I was that guy. You had to go once a month. and uh, Oh, but it the would doctor. Always, you would, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prescribing anything. No, no, no. Just everyone would recommend, go to go to this guy. And then uh, literally all of a sudden I went one month. It, it was just gone. The practice was gone. No shit. The DEA probably busted it. I have no idea. It was so I weird. hope that they did. Yeah, my guy was just... Uh, he would require me to come in like once every six months to feed him the same bullshit so that he could have plausible deniability. Right, you had to come in. For me, it was every month, and, and he, he would just yeah, he'd check my blood pressure and just be like, "So you, uh, yeah, you still feeling like you can't focus?" And I'm, <laughs> I just went like, "Yes, sir." <laughs> I mean, it it was kind of true. I I was definitely it definitely helps you focus. It was helping me focus. Truly, it was. But God, what an awful! I was awful. about to start doing financial crimes if if that thing comes to an end. <laughs> it could have been me instead of SBF. I, I, in as much as I wish, in in as much as we Govy and and Ozempic have kind of finally, they finally found, for the most part, a viable magic pill for um, weight loss. Arguably, I just want them. Just come on, man. Put all that scientific effort toward giving us a clean Adderall. Give us that shit. I mean, one would argue it it exists within the miracle no way, that dude. is Diet Coke, but no. There's nothing like that first week of Adderall. Oh, my God. When you first... I remember... I still remember this kid. God damn it. I, I won't say his name, but I... I he, uh, he came over to my house when I was like 19 or 20. My parents were out of town, and uh, he raided. We, my parents kept all their prescriptions right there above the toaster. And he goes, "Oh, let's see what drugs you got. Your parents got." And then he saw my dad had adult ADD, so they prescribed him some. Your dad had it. Yeah, but he he didn't like it, so he didn't do it. So it was just sitting there, and it was five milligrams. And he goes, "Oh man, this this stuff's really good. You should try it sometime." And I went, "Yeah, whatever." 
And then uh, like a week later, I tried it. And I reported back to I tried one pill, five milligrams. And I said, it didn't do anything. She says, how many did you take? I said, one five milligram pill. He goes, dude, you idiot. You got to take like three. It'll, it'll, five milligrams is nothing. You really do start cruising at 15 milligrams. So I, <laughs> <laughs> brother, I hit, I did three of them and it was just like, it was, it was a whole new world. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I feel great. <laughs> yeah, it's you dipped in you sauce. That's a good, that's, hmm. Hmm. What? It's you dipped in you sauce? That's what it feels like. Yeah, you just, yeah, I guess. Man. You're like, I'm yeah. really dipped in me sauce. Yeah, you feel you feel like everything you've got to say is is um you just feel like every conversation is good and important. Yeah. Oh, you just start writing down your own thoughts because you're like, this is <laughs> people are gonna need this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh before I like figure out my life, I first need to get organized. I've got all these things I need to organize, but you know what sounds really good? Jerking off. <laughs> Man, God, that sounds so good right now. I didn't so much have that. I had the thing where I was like, okay, I'm going to take it so I can get all this work done, but then it's... I got to clean before right, I get all exactly. this work done. And How am I supposed like, to get any work done in this? I should watch this baseball game and, and, and keep <laughs> score. <laughs> He keeps score. That's such an Adderall thing to do. I'm gonna watch this baseball game and keep score myself. <laughs> oh shit! What did, what would you do, Dylan? Uh, yeah, keep score of a baseball game. I would just like I, I'm finally gonna organize my bookmarks. <laughs> Your bookmarks? Yeah, on, on the computer. I'm finally gonna have it all organized, and then I'll finally be able to do. The thing. Oh, yeah. God, Once I, would, I figure out what the thing is, I will be ready to do it. I would get into, um, I was like, I need to clean up all my playlist. Yeah. I don't want any duds coming on. Yeah. When I want to be able to put this thing on shuffle and it's just all bangers. So it's just like hours of like, trush, I'm no gonna, one listens to them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go through my pictures and delete all the duplicates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but first, I'm going to play some Halo online <laughs> just to kind of like, you know, loosen up and then fast forward. 15 hours later, it's three in the morning. I'm outside smoking a cigarette, pissed off, because in 15 hours, I leveled down instead of up. I actually lost progress. <laughs> just, just pissing off good gamers in the... Uh, anyway. Really good stuff. And you yeah. can drink a 1,000 beers on it. That's a pretty cool side effect. Yeah. Oh, boy. I mean... God, if you're out there and you're thinking about dicking around with Adderall, trust us when we say... Do it. Do it. Let it rip. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> Give it a shot, man. It's so sick. It's so great. Oh, For a man. bit, and then yeah. it becomes really bad. Yeah. If you want to age like 10 years in a year, just fucking rail Adderall for a year, right? Yeah. Convince a convince a convince an unscrupulous doctor <laughs> to give you... It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. Or just, you know, rob a pharmacy. <laughs> How you do it is up to you. Okay. Should we switch gears? I mean, I so we're we're gonna wait to see what what else comes out of this. But man, oh man, they really yeah. There's already uh, so much insane stuff coming out. We we covered a little bit in the bonus episodes where we were talking about SBF's crazy parents. Yeah, um, it's just an, he thought that he discovered the infinite money glitch, but what it turned out to be was just an an, an he immoral was an infinite glitch. Money bitch. Yeah. Oh God, he was an infinite <laughs> money bitch. I think that's what they called the fucking. Uh, I think that's what the Michael Lewis book is called, Going Infinite. Because when Michael Lewis first contacted him, he told he told him, for what I want to do to change the world, I need infinite money. Wow, yeah. I mean so cool. Cool, dude. <laughs> Me too. I I definitely need infinite money also for what I want to do with the world. There's a gnat. I'm gonna get it. Go up. I know, I know. Ah, oh, it's flying over the fucking whatever. Just, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I wish I had my Adderall. <laughs> Truly, <yes. laughs> so there's a there's a big spooky story that came out on uh, what was it on Bloomberg? This expose. Yeah, I have to tell you guys, this was a uh... fucker. Sorry, go on. I won't do it again. It was so fun to show Ben this article and um, and watch him read it live. 
I was uh, I was shocked. But yeah, so so Bloomberg put out this big. They've been th- they've been working on this story since I believe August, basically about uh, it's it's called Ghost in the Machine: How Fake Parts Infiltrated Airline Fleets, and they basically started looking into <clears throat> the story because a um, a a maintenance contractor started noticing that some of the parts in this was uh, for TAP. Yeah, Portugal, Portugal. Portuguese airline. They noticed that some of the parts they had didn't really add up, right? They were replacement parts that were supposed to be brand new, mm-hmm. but they had weird wear and tear on them for a brand new part. That was inconsistent with the paperwork that said, this is a brand new part. Right. So they started pulling paperwork, mm-hmm. going back to the manufacturers and all that stuff. And everyone's going, well, this is all fucking forged. These are forged documents. Mm-hmm. And forged they, signatures. Oh yeah, from employees that either don't exist or that they made up all this stuff, um, and they uncovered this crazy forgery ring. And uh, if you are afraid of flying, this might, this next part might not be for you. But don't worry, we'll get to the part where maybe you don't have so much to worry about. But so the uh, oh. That was something else. Um, so as Emil said, it was Air Portugal's maintenance subsidiary. And since then, uh, since it was discovered, Saf- Safran SA, which is a French aerospace company, they're the ones that make these engines. They are the CFM 56. Uh, they make them with, GM- with GE, General Electric, and they've discovered more than 90 falsified certificates for parts found on 126 engines, all linked to the same distributor in London. And that... That engine is extremely popular. Right? Oh yeah, every <clears throat> single it's, Southwest plane is, and uses a lot of the other engines. major airlines yes. in America. So, like the seven thirty seven, basically, pretty much every seven thirty seven, uh, some of the Airbus A three twenties, I think, use these. Uh, I'm probably you wrong. You guys but, can't see it, but he's literally hard right now. He loves this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they 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 found him. All linked to this same distributor in London from uh, this company called AOG Technics. And it was started eight years ago by this guy named Jose Alejandro Zamora Urala, who I didn't like that the article put this because it was kind of, it felt a little racist and inaccurate. He was a part time DJ from Venezuela. He is. Yeah, but he also did legitimately work. He did. He, he, but before that. Yeah, he was a DJ from yeah, Venezuela. Yeah, he was a, wait, I have some of it. Um, he good for him okay so yeah born in 1988 zamora dabbled in you hate this huh professions from music to real estate before settling into the world of aircraft good for him for a while he spun techno tunes dj fuck your plane up um (laughs) techno tunes under the stage name santa militia in venezuela italy and spain in 2022 he married ledin an interior designer on the island of mallorca couple was photographed at the rural luxury retreat sporting matching Rolex watches and cradling a pair of babies dressed in identical cream colored rompers. And we'll get into it. The business of forging highly lucrative <laughs> airplane parts. <laughs> yeah. And also terrifyingly not a new phenomenon. <clears throat> so they found that all major U.S. carriers and half a dozen others have identified bogus parts from AOG on their planes. There are no emergencies at the moment, but it just uh, it, it all highlights this gap in the system that he exploited. Uh, so, just a couple of data points: there are twenty-two thousand of these CFM fifty-six engines in service, and in fact, I was surprised to learn that every two seconds, a plane with these engines takes off somewhere in the world. Yeah, and uh, so with since, potentially a bogus part. Yes. So since this, and, and when we say bogus, we mean. It, it it appears that the 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 main fraud that was occurring was selling refurbished parts as new because so here's the deal uh the federal aviation administration here in the united states and the uh european union aviation safety agency they they don't regulate Right, the they secondary have no jurisdiction market. over this. Yeah, because they, it would just be it would be impossible for the FAA. They say that they lack the resources to regulate. So what they rely on are the maintenance companies and the airlines to kind of almost like a an internal Yelp sort of system. Right, you guys are going to be responsible for making sure you're putting the right parts in. Yeah, because there are parts get replaced on airplanes constantly. Which and the airlines have an incentive to right. They don't want to put a bogus part exactly in their airplane. Have it. 
which we'll go into, this has happened in the past, you know, all of a sudden you're flying, it's vibrating more than it's supposed to be, all of a sudden it fucking rips open. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it gets tricky because there was an FAA-endorsed quality assurance company that had accredited AOG and their practices. But then when you go, when they go and ask the, uh, the, the, the company that was doing the quality insur assurance, they had subcontracted that out. And that entity had gone to London and apparently said, wow, everything looks hunky dory here. But then as soon as they turn their backs, you know, they're actually engaging in fraud. It was just fraud. Right. And so <clears throat> they talk about a bit, a bit of the timeline, right? So they say AOG started off humbly, humbly, after a year in business, the brokerage had just over 7,800 pounds in cash, company filing show. The fledgling company moved from residence to residence around the London area over the next few years as its sales gradually grew. By early 2019, it had 18,000 pounds in cash and made a profit of 22,000 pounds, the record show. The Not business bad. abruptly prospered. For the year ending February 2020, AOG reported 2.43 million pounds in cash and a profit Profit of 2.2 million pounds. Company record, record show that shortly after AOG began selling thousands of jet engine parts with falsified documents. The mm -hmm. engine makers allege in that Matthew Reeve, a lawyer for CFM, has described in legal filings as a sophisticated deception on an industrial scale. Man, it turns out that uh, fabricating parts uh, or Falsifying documents that state that refurbished parts are actually new. There's some pretty high margins to be made. Well, you get them for much cheaper, sell them, sell them for, for much higher. <laughs> yeah. It's capitalism at work, baby. So uh, one of the funny things that they found was that they apparently there was this fake, one of the many fake things was a, a LinkedIn profile for a Michael Smith, who was uh, the AOG quality assurance manager. Um but if you look at if if you do a reverse we've got the image pulled up here if you look at the reverse google image search of him um you can you can just you can find the same photo on stock image sites as a confident senior man in a white t-shirt which i always love how they describe him that's what i want to get my parts from it from confident senior man in white t-shirt yeah yeah who else yeah uh so yeah, one of the one of the biggest instances of fake parts being an issue was in September eighth, nineteen eighty nine. There was something. There was part Nair flight three ninety four carrying fifty five people from Oslo to Hamburg crashed, and investigators found counterfeit bolts and brackets in the on the tail section, which had failed, um, and that kicked off this whole massive um undertaking in investigations here in the united states so in the 90s there was this woman named uh, she was the transportation department inspector general who we absolutely fucking love her name was mary shivo pay pig salute to mary shivo look at her look at her i mean look at this woman also For, i do want to know oof. guys watching ben find out about a an airplane crash he didn't know about in real time was pretty special just ooh. I don't know about them all, but I did not know that this one, I, this is the first one that I knew. Uh, I had not even a clue that uh, counterfeit parts were ever an issue mm. because I naively thought that the FAA would never allow right, that. Right, it's an extremely regulated industry. Yeah. yeah, but like you said, it's one of those things where they can't possibly regulate the minutia that is involved in regular aircraft and engine maintenance. Right, so they point out a rash of bogus aircraft Aircraft parts sparked a furor in the 90s as the U.S. Transportation Department's Inspector General at the time, Mary Shivo, led inv investigations into fake parts that helped secure about 120 criminal convictions between 1990 and 1996. She told us she told a Senate oversight panel in 1995 that the industry was so awash with suspect components that one must unavoidably draw this conclusion. If it is a part of an airplane, it could be bogus. She also sparred with FAA officials whom she accused of downplaying the potential risks proposed by unapproved parts. Don't fuck with Mary Shivo. Don't fuck she knows with what Shibo. she's talking about. So in response, the FAA just kind of farted into the wind. They released a voluntary program in 1996 for part sellers to agree to audits and other checks to accredit their quality assurance practices without straining the FAA's limited resources. So it's kind of like we were saying a moment ago, it's kind of like a, a Yelp system, a, just a trust like, hey, we've worked with this company enough to trust them. We've got positive reviews or whatever to back it up. And everybody kind of 
agrees to um yeah self-regulate but that's that's how you get them right you're, right you you're a modest shop you know you got seven thousand pounds in the bank mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you go you know what we got the trust of the industry that's exactly it's right it's time we start forging documents baby yeah so 30 years later you've got this uh the, this engine company was directly duped they installed parts from aog in 16 engines they bought used parts that were advertised as brand new <clears throat> so the the whole system is basically it's based on the trust that the documents provided are real and the other issue is that they're mostly paper records right so it's quite antiquated airlines have to check these records one by one and in in some cases there are several suppliers deep to ensure that they don't have the parts it's like okay this part was bought from this company from this company from this company and it's estimated that repairs can cost up to three hundred thousand dollars per engine, depending on how deep they've got to go. Yeah, that's going to be pricey for airlines, huh? Yeah. There's also a there's a part where they talk about just how widespread it was. Uh, legal filings reveal the scope and means of the alleged fraud. Forgeries turned up at an engine services provider northeast of London, a parts supplier in Florida, a maintenance firm in Scandinavia, an airline in Africa, and another maintenance outfit incorporated in Germany, among others. Well, Emil, I'm concerned. <laughs> Myself and loved ones have flights coming up. Should I be? Should I be? Dude, we're getting on a flight in a couple of weeks. Well, I'm gonna be white knuckling next to you. I sure hope those fan blades aren't from AOG. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Christ. Uh, but they say that for now, there's no immediate risk to flight safety and no evidence that life limited and safety critical parts were involved. Life limited means that they are only meant to. They're parts that are meant to. Um, be cycled out after certain, after a certain, uh, they're, they're life limited. It's like, right. it's not just wait for it to fail. It is no, after however Fucking many 10, miles, hours yeah, flat, you're, yeah, get it out of there. So they're saying that there's no evidence that there's any parts like that or any ones that are safety critical are involved, but still it's, uh, but yeah, in a worst case, they could be discarded or damaged components that have no business being in the unforgiving heart of a jet engine. Their temperatures run hotter than the melting point of metal and blades can spin at more than 10,000 revolutions per minute. So think about that when you're sitting in coach. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to that I say, I can't control it and I got to get no, where I'm going <clears throat> at any cost whatsoever, even if it means me dying due to fake parts. So bring it on, fate. Oh God! I, I hope. Don't, so. I, I really don't want that to be replayed I when so. I die. <laughs> that I. I hope some British. No, play this. Yeah. <laughs> play this at our funeral when we die in, yeah. in oh, November. Geez. You hope that some British what? No, I. I hope it's some British scammer that uh, takes me down. <sighs> I mean, yeah. Better that than um. Uh, than a Irish scammer. Oh yeah, for sure, <laughs> dude. Come on. Well, I guess on the on the topic of of airplanes, there was a guy. Wait, who, I'm obsessed with this guy, Charles Feeney. Like, I, I I don't like. Okay, so if you've ever gone through an airport, you're familiar with the duty free. Oh, I shops. don't like duty free. Sure, but this you guy. like his whole philosophy. Well, so real fast, the the guy the the duty free shops that you all know and love when you walk through and you see a giant bottle of. Cavassier or whatever, and it's like <laughs> and like the cheapest carton of cigarettes you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, because you don't have to pay pay taxes. There was a guy who thought that up. Who Charles said, Feeney? Yeah, his name was Charles Feeney, and he he basically was really good at business, but also hated money. Apparently, right. He made billions of dollars operating a global network of shops selling liquor, perfume, jewelry, and other items at tourist hubs. He gave over a mi- a billion dollars to his alma mater, Cornell. Yeah. Why would you? I don't understand the people who love their college so much that they're like, I want to give you money. You've never made billions of dollars, though. Yeah, I guess, but I wouldn't give any to Cal State Long Beach. <laughs> or maybe I would. Maybe I would, and then I'd have to build a bathroom of, in my in my own. <clears throat> He's got such a nice... Philosophy? Yeah, well, everyone, does. everyone who makes a ton of money is like, either you, like, I'm the fucking best, that's why I did it, or like that thing of like, Anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. Maybe don't be so lazy, you dumb piece of shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, but he says, much of his success, he said, was dumb luck, and he didn't need a vast fortune to support his modest tastes. He wasn't just like, like he knows he stepped on his own dick and was just like, great. <laughs> this kicks ass. <laughs> Stepping on your own dick is bad, though. Yeah, it's like when you say someone stepped in shit. It's like being, it's ironic. 
yeah. Like yeah. you really stepped in shit with that one. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a good thing. Yeah. He, I, the part that I didn't like was that he said he actually prefers to fly in coach. Because get the fuck out of here. Who, if you've flown. I know, I don't believe him on like, that. Like, come one. on, dude. Like, none of us are going to. You don't have no. to sell me on that kind of false modesty. <laughs> flying right. coach sucks, objectively. Right. Apparently, a lot, uh, some of it does seem a bit put upon. Like, he got a. It might have been Cornell. Oh, yeah. Okay. In 2012, Cornell named Feeney an icon of industry and, as a joke, presented him, presented him with a $13 Casio watch because apparently he, you know, he. He said, I can get, well, these resell quite a, for quite a bit on eBay. <laughs> Shut up, dude. All right. I mean, but you're also, awesome, like, but still. Apparently, he preferred those like cheap, cheap watches. Cheap shit, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, hey, I have Timexes that just will not quit. I got so, them for like $35. I just don't even wear a watch because my stupid fucking wrist bone right, right, gets right. in the way. Stupid fucking wrist bone. Somebody get me a file so I can file it down. But I just, I'm, I'm obsessed with this guy. Yeah, well, calm down, dude. He's dead. He's not going to fuck you. I concluded that if you hung to hung on to a piece of the action for yourself, you'd always be worrying about that piece. I like people it. I, used he, to, that's a good quote from him. People used to ask how ask me how I got my jollies, and I guess I'm happy when what I'm doing is helping people and unhappy when what I'm doing isn't helping people. He donated. But we talk about that on the show all the time. Like it's We're always like, how much is enough? Because we watch these yeah. sickos just like... <laughs> Like toil away at squeezing every last fucking thing and preserving as much of it. Just like hauled into court, being like, "What's wrong with you?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's nice <laughs> to see someone who's just like. I love the idea of a guy getting hauled into court just so they could ask him, "What's wrong with you?" <laughs> Tru- <laughs> Truly, SBF, what's wrong with but you? But it is so refreshing to see someone just go like, "Oh yeah, that's enough. That's okay. We're good." By the way, just to backtrack a bit, is there any? There, the the epitome of an Adderall brain is going. I could save the world. I just need unlimited money to do so. Oh, how for, yeah. Adderall oh, brain yeah, yeah, is yeah. that to be like the to just because I've had that thought where when I was high, where I was like, what should I do with my life? You know what? I should run for president. I should do it. I could do it. I could run for city council first, and then be the mayor, and then be a senator, and then boom, right there, I'd be I'd be good enough to be run for president. Dude, <laughs> it's like, what a fucking- when I was reading the president thing, I was like, anyone who's experienced like the early days of an Adderall prescription, it's like, I could five uh, percent <laughs> chance, five percent chance I could run for president. No, I can do it. I Bully. can fix the world with enough money. You're like making a list of your friends. You're like, he could be a campaign manager. <laughs> <laughs> He's good with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it truly is and to to give yourself how does he oh how did he come up with five percent oh, i've got about a five percent chance of running for president dude jesus christ well i guess our, our our last story is is a fun one the uh the amc ceo Adam yeah, Aaron. we haven't checked in with the apes in a while. God, dude. And this is King Ape. He he's stylized himself as the the silverback, silver, silverback, gorilla. Um, yeah, the CEO. What is it, Aaron? Adam Aaron. Adam Aaron. He 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 was getting blackmailed, and he did the right thing. He went straight to the FBI, even though it meant embarrassing and humiliating himself which is kind of what jeff bezos did remember when jeff bezos was getting blackmailed a while back about his dick pics and he said fuck it release him i don't care or his nudes yeah but also he's been married since i think 1987 so a bit of a tough uh, yeah this guy adam aaron bit of a tough but i mean so that's the thing this guy's been a bit of a a nut for a while this is just another a nut chasing a nut a nut chasing a nut, exactly. Boy, but howdy. so you know, Semaphore broke it down. And they said Aaron embodied the meme stock craze when AMC shares soared along so, alongside those of GameStop, BlackBerry, and other Left for Dead companies, calling himself the Silverback and taking to Twitter. Now X, he became the spiritual leader of an online army of retail investors known as apes who gather on social media sites to await the Moas, mother of all short squeezes. All while he was dumping shares onto the market. <laughs> yeah. And so they said, this is just like another in the long line of questionable decisions he made. There was uh, the interview where it seemed as if he wasn't wearing pants. There was uh, He wasn't wearing pants. <laughs> if you look at the, it, it's clearly he's just sitting on a, on a computer 
computer chair with a suit, uh, a shirt and a tie and no pants. It's like a guy can't be comfy anymore. It's Great. insane. Uh, <laughs> he spent $28 million buying a stake in a teetering gold He mine. didn't buy. He, he, he got the company. AMC yeah, yeah. bought a $28 million stake in a gold mine. Right. He called it a bold diversification move. Jesus. One analyst called it idiotic. <laughs> he also had a plan at one point to deliver AMC theater popcorn to people's houses and also at one point of course pivoted to nfc's nfts um so the, the thing is he was sexting with a woman from the bronx and this woman is another hero to the show uh he was sexting with her and then she tried to blackmail him for hundreds of thousands of dollars wait wait this is my favorite part though what the the texts because i need more details on this all right mm -hmm. So yes. Aaron, who has been married since 1987, mistook her for a woman with whom he'd, he'd had a prior relationship. Yeah, a asking, ballerina. Asking whether she was a ballerina who had done unmentionable things to him. Yes. Please, the, don't just leave. <laughs> what are they? Yeah, yeah. I'll do anything. Well, she probably plugged him or whatever. So he sent her nudes in, in response. He finally got around to uh, texting nudes. And apparently uh, sexy pictures of himself with some other woman. So hot. Trying to do like a three-way or something. Insanely with hot. With this woman he thought was a ballerina he had already had sex with. Um, so she sent, so this woman from the Bronx who's blackmailing him sent him texts from burners and went on to pretend to be a Vanity Fair reporter and demanded hush money. So she's really running this elaborate scam making him think <clears throat> that uh, he's all but found out and about to be exposed. Yeah, she pretended to be a, an ex-boyfriend and was sending things like, offers are coming in like crazy. People love a scandal. Yeah, send me some, I mean, pfft. so instead of, uh, instead of paying the ransom, he went to the FBI. Pussy. And the, so the board, the AMC board of directors is in this funny position because they're like, he didn't technically do anything wrong. He didn't, in terms of the business, he didn't like compromise corporate secrets or anything. He didn't do anything like that, but it's just one line, one, one more thing in a right. long line of questionable like, behavior. Like you said, this guy just continues to act like a psycho. Yeah. What a fucking, I love him, man. Make him make <laughs> What a CEO. We need more CEOs like that. Like the guy who's the CEO of LaCroix. Why is he a nut? National Beverage Corporation. He's an insane person. Oh, didn't we talk about this? We idea? did way, yeah, yeah, way yeah. back in we the might day. Have to dive back in. And he also got accused of, uh, of, of coming on to his private pilot or something. Like he came on her? No, him. The, 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 this guy was a male and, and the private pilot was a male and just he like. He came on him? He didn't. He, no. <laughs> There was no come. You said coming on to him. Yeah, he was coming on to him sexually, like oh, uh, oh, like, like, like approaching, like making sexual sure, sure, advances. Sure. And uh yeah, also that guy's uh press releases for National Beverage Corporation are just fucking insane. Really entertaining stuff. But anywho, should we stop there? We got a lot to talk about in the uh in the bonus this week. Yeah. We love an we'll just say we love an absolute nut job CEO. We love when people scam others. We love it when uh, when dudes get absolutely blasted on Adderall and think that they can save the world <laughs> and run for president. And we love we love Disney characters turned turned human. We should do one month where we um, each get an Adderall prescription and we just see what we can accomplish with the show. Yeah, we'll see if I can finally um, clear out all my bookmarks. By the end of the month, we're just like <laughs> interviewing Tom Cruise. And <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine? Uh, I um, I remember one time I had probably 50 bookmarks open across like four different windows or something. And, of course, you think that they're all so important and they're things that you need to read and can't afford to lose. And somehow my computer just crashed and I lost all of them. And I thought, oh, fuck. This, this was so important. I lost all of this shit that I need to um, recover somehow and I could not recover it. And then I just had to let it go. <laughs> I just was like, well, I guess I just need to tell myself that it must have not been that important. And it was very freeing. My friend, it was very freeing. For a brief moment, I thought, ah, I guess I, I, in a roundabout way, I did clear all those bookmarks. The bookmarks was the friends we made along the way. That's right. 
Well, in the bonus episode, we're going to be talking about some... Uh, there's a TikTok I got to show you, this kid rapping, this white kid rapping, and it's... Um, oh, is it Drake's son? No, it is not Drake's son. Adonis? No, but I did see that, but I didn't watch. I saw it. It came across my feed, but I skipped over it because I thought he, his child was a baby. He's six. Okay. People got mad at me because I shit on it, and they said, Emil, he's six years old. Yeah. I said, I don't care. You enter the rap game? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> All right, save it because I really want to hear. And uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the bonus. Patreon.com slash paypigspod. Bye.